So you've got a Kubernetes cluster running and you've deployed an application, maybe even a database. But now you face a classic problem. How do you actually manage that database from your own computer? The common old school way is to use a command called kubectl-controller port forward. It basically creates a temporary single lane tunnel from a port on your local machine directly to the database inside the cluster. And while it works for a quick check, it has major downsides. You have to keep a terminal window open constantly. If you close it, the tunnel collapses. It's not very secure as it bypasses standard network policies. And if you need to connect to multiple things, you end up juggling a bunch of different terminals and ports. It's just clunky. Today, we're throwing that method out. I'm going to show you how to create a secure and permanent connection to your Kubernetes database using a zero trust networking tool called TwinGate. This will make your remote data database feel like it's running right in your local machine, allowing you to connect with your favorite GUI tool like dBeaver seamlessly. So let's build a proper modern workflow. I'm going to have the database and the way we're connecting to it on the same machine, but it works exactly the same if you're connecting to your database from anywhere in the world. Okay, before we dive into Kubernetes, let's make sure we have all the tools we need. We're starting from scratch, so I'll walk you through everything. So first you'll need a Kubernetes cluster. This can be Minikube, Docker Desktop, or a cloud-based one like GKE or EKS. I have Docker Desktop running. So you can, if you just have that running on your computer, that will give you your Kubernetes cluster. So we can test the connection with just kube control cluster info, and then we can see that it's running. And you'll also need Helm, the package manager for Kubernetes. If you don't have it, check the description below for a link to the official installation guide. And you'll also need an account on twingate.com. You'll need to sign up for a free account. And thanks to Twingate for sponsoring this video. Finally, you're going to need a database GUI tool. I love dBeaver because it's free, powerful, and works on with almost any database. So if we go to dbeaver.io slash download, and then you can just download for whatever your operating system is. So if you have all the prerequisites, we can get started. First step is to deploy a PostgreSQL database running inside our server. The easiest way to do this is with a Helm chart from Bitnami. So this command is going to add the Bitnami repo to Helm so it knows where to find the PostgreSQL chart. Next, we can install PostgreSQL with one command. This is the command here, and we'll name our deployment my Postgres. That's what that is, the name of it. So you can do that. Okay, now Helm will give us all these notes including some warnings that we can ignore for now, but it gives us some important information up here for accessing our new database. So here we need this command, which is going to get the password. So I'll just copy that and we'll paste it here. And then we just have to do echo and then Postgres password. So here it is. So this command here that we just ran, it found, it found the Kubernetes secret where the password is stored decoded it, and we now printed it right here. So I just need to copy this and keep it safe. And finally, we need the internal address of our database service. This is the DNS name that other applications inside the cluster use to find the database. So we'll do kube control get SVC. So we can see the name my Postgres dash PostgreSQL. That's the name of our service. And its full internal service is this and then .default.svc.cluster.local. So we're gonna use that address in the next step. Now we need to configure the TwinGate network. We need to tell TwinGate how to create a secure path to our database. So you're gonna either have to create an account or sign in. And if you're creating an account for the first time, it may guide you through creating a remote network or a resource. But once your account is going, we can just start by creating a remote network here. And so I will click remote network. And then for location, I'll put on premise. And then it's a, we'll just put KS cluster for the name. And then I'll just do add remote network. Now we'll click on this network we just created and then create a resource. 
So we're going to define our database as a resource within that network. And the network is our Kubernetes cluster. So we can give it any name. I'm just going to put K8S Postgres database. And then this address, this is the private address we'll use on our machine. So here's where we put that address. So remember it was my, my desk Postgres .postgres UL, and then it's .default .svc .cluster .local. And then I can click ports, and then I can just put 5432, which is the Postgres port. Okay, now I can click create resource. Then I can just grant access to everyone and grant access. And if we, ever want to, if we wanted to make it easier to get to, we can also go to edit and then I can add an alias. And I'm just going to make a simple name postgres.kds.local that we can also use to access. So now Twingate knows that any traffic destined for our URL should be securely routed to our PostgreSQL service inside the cluster. So the next step is to deploy the Twingate connector. So how does Twingate actually get inside our private cluster? Well, it uses a connector. This is a small service we'll deploy in Kubernetes that makes a secure outbound connection to the Twingate network. This is important because we don't need to open any risky inbound firewall ports. So in the same screen that we're already at, I'm gonna click on deploy connector. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, we can see all the different ways you can deploy, and we're going to use the Helm chart deployment option. If we scroll down, we can generate tokens. So we've generated our tokens, and we could copy them, but actually there's a command down here that already has the tokens in them that we're going to use. But first, we need to add the Twingate Helm chart repository. So I'll copy this command, and then we'll run it over on our terminal and then we'll use it to deploy our connector. So first we have to add the Twingate Helm repo. Okay, now I'm back over here and I'm gonna copy my Helm command that's going to deploy the connector. So I'm just pasting this whole command in here and now it's deployed. And if we go back over to our Twingate site, it will show that everything's uh, connected. So I didn't even refresh, it just automatically refreshed once the connector was working. Okay, now it's just time to connect with dBeaver. So all the infrastructure is in pl place, it's time to connect. Now, one thing cool about Twingate is that we can now connect to this database running on this local computer from any device anywhere in the world. So we can actually download any of these, plat we can download Twingate for any of these platforms, including Android, iOS, Chrome, Linux, and Windows, or Mac OS, and that will help us connect to our our twin gate deployments. So I'm just gonna download the Mac OS installer. So you'll be downloading either the Mac OS or Windows installer or Linux if you're doing this on Linux. And then we just have to set things up. So I'm just gonna configure my VPN and then we have to add system extension. If we go to our top bar here, we can see Twingate up here. And then we can see if we go to the resources here, we can get the alias name of the resource or the full URL. So I'll just copy the address of the alias. Okay, now we'll open up the Beaver. Now you may be trying to connect with any sort of database. And the whole point of this is that we can connect to the, the database running on our local computer from any other computer in the world and it's gonna be completely secure. So I'm just going to click up here to connect to a database then I'll go to PostgreSQL, and then I can put the host name here that I just copied, postgres.kds.local. That's the one that we created. The port is correct, database is correct, username is correct. Now, now we have to put in the password that we got toward the beginning of the tutorial on in the terminal. I'll just paste that in here. And then we can do our final test. I'll test the connection and it's connected. We got connected, so I'll put OK and finished. It works perfectly. Now we can begin browsing the database, running queries, and managing tables just as if it were running on our local machine. It's fast, seamless, and secure.
And there you have it. We've completely replaced the clunky cube controller port forward workflow with a modern, secure, and permanent solution. Your local machine is now part of a private zero trust network, giving you seamless access to the resources you need inside your Kubernetes cluster. And you can use this method for Redis, internal dashboards, or any other service in your cluster. You just add a new resource in TwinGate, and it just works. I hope this tutorial helped you level up your Kubernetes workflow. And thanks for watching.